have been three new cases of the Zika virus among U.S. citizens, and of course, people are freaking out about it, but don't worry, I'm going to give you the details of what the Zika virus is, how it's transmitted, and what its ramifications are. Now, the Zika virus is something that is transmitted through mosquitoes from person to person, meaning that it is not contagious, so if someone has this virus, they're not going to give it to you simply by talking to you or being around you. It could be transmitted uh, through sexual contact. However, even that is unclear at this point. But we do know for certain that mosquitoes do transmit the Zika virus. And if you are a non-pregnant human, then you're probably not going to suffer any serious uh, health concerns. However, if you are a pregnant woman, then you do have something to worry about. Now, the Zika virus leads to a, a physical deformity among children. Uh, we do have a picture kind of showing you what it looks like. Basically, uh, the brain doesn't develop normally, the head doesn't develop normally, and oftentimes uh, children who are born with the Zika virus uh, do not survive very long. Now, uh, when it comes to the confirmed cases here in the United States, there have been three cases in Florida, two in Illinois, uh, one in Texas and one in Hawaii. Again, there's nothing to freak out about at this moment because it is not easily transmittable person to person. However, if there's a big outbreak in a particular area or country, for instance, there's a big outbreak in Brazil, it is likely that uh, in hot, humid weather, mosquitoes can multiply. Uh, if there are a lot of mosquitoes, they can not only transfer the virus from one person to another, but it becomes more and more of an issue, right? Like, it, they'll give it to you. If you're pregnant, you're going to pass it on um, to your baby, and then it will suffer from birth defects as a result of that. I'll get into more details on uh, transmission in just a second. Now, the Zika virus is caused by the 80s mosquito. It's been determined women can pass the virus to their babies, causing birth defects. All the Zika cases in the U.S. involve foreign travel. So this is not something that originated in the U.S. It's from people who traveled to other countries, got infected, and then came back. The Florida victims traveled to Colombia and Venezuela, and the two pregnant women in Illinois visited... Central America and the Caribbean. A Texas man was also diagnosed after he returned from El Salvador in November. So right now, those traveling to the Caribbean or uh, South and Central America are at risk, okay? But if you're a pregnant woman, this is really more about you than anything else, okay? So to give you some more details on that, the CDC has named 14 countries and territories in Latin America and the Caribbean, including Puerto Rico, Mexico, and Haiti, and are advising pregnant women to avoid traveling there. An estimated 80% of people don't even develop any symptoms after being infected with the virus. For everyone else, the symptoms are usually mild, a rash, headaches, pain in the joints and bones, and fever. These symptoms typically show up between 3 and 12 days after the initial mosquito bite, then go away within a week. Hospitalization is un common and death is extremely rare. I guess the spread of this virus is growing rapidly and there are two things that are playing a role in that. Increased travel is one of them. More and more people are traveling to these countries where they're getting infected. And another issue is climate change. So climate change, of course, is warming our planet. And because of the increased warm temperature, because uh, temperatures, because of uh, increased precipitation in some parts of the world, what typically happens is it creates an environment for these mosquitoes to thrive. More mosquitoes means more people getting infected more with the virus. More chances of infection, at least. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that's what's going on right now in the world. Hooray! <laughs> um, yeah, so there aren't really ways to combat that I, this, I guess, besides avoiding them. No treatment uh, and no vaccine is available at this moment. So it seems like what they're working on right now is perhaps modifying mosquitoes? Yes. So they are trying to genetically modify these mosquitoes so they, they'll be unable to pass along this virus. So it's a British biotech firm, and they're trying to crack the virus by, again, genetically modifying the insects. I don't know how that works, but it sounds great. I do have <laughs> a little bit of insight on that because we've covered this a similar study before or okay. attempt to uh, neutralize mosquitoes before a nerd alert. Um, so... Mosquitoes are actually the most deadly animal in the world. Mm -hmm. About 750,000 human deaths happen a year due to uh, mosquito-borne disease. Um, and so some people or some researchers had attempted to inject uh, some mosquitoes with Wolbachia bacteria, mm -hmm. which would make 
basically render them uh, sterile or on some kind of birth control. And then these mosquitoes would mate with uh, mosquitoes in the wild. And then their larvae would never uh, mature to the age where they would be able to become sustainable and mm -hmm. I'm all about that. Okay, so I, that's an interesting way of combating this issue. And I have a question. I don't know if you know the answer to this. Let's do it. But <laughs> oftentimes when we do these stories about mosquitoes spreading illnesses and diseases, I always wonder if there is really a necessity for mosquitoes. I, I, I'm sure that there's some necessity and it's important to... Well, you know, the ecosystem. It's interesting that you bring that up yeah. because it's just like we don't really know what a mosquito's purpose is besides... Making us miserable? Making us dead. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's we, we're not really sure of that yet. I mean, there might be some unintended consequences of Eradicating releasing them? the... Well, I mean, the thing is we might inject them with Wolbachia bacteria. What if uh, it causes... What if somehow this causes uh, the strain to mutate into a more virulent strain? What mm -hmm. if something mm -hmm. happens that we didn't foresee in the lab in the wild? So we're not really there yet and knowing what the the causal effects of this are mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's it's a i think it's a good cause i, I mean it's, it's, think it's risky it's a risky thing because there might be you know some hidden unknown consequences of of messing with mosquitoes and maybe mm -hmm. even genetically modifying them but I hate mosquitoes, and I'm willing to take those risks. Okay. As someone who's not scientific at all and has no idea what she's talking about. I think about. many people, I mean, when you when you weigh the effects, I mean, perhaps yeah. it would affect the, the food chain or the environment in yeah. some way. But then we're also talking about saving human lives. And also, if we've created... Uh, this issue where our planet is warming and now we have this unnatural uh, increase in mosquito populations I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world to find a way to mitigate that mm -hmm. right and I don't I don't know what the answer is but if climate change is leading to the spread of more viruses we need to do something about it right and and look I know that it sounds scary for women who are pregnant I'm happy that if you are a living breathing human who is not pregnant you'll be fine for the most part but it is scary for women who travel abroad and you know they are pregnant and they come back with this illness that can really have serious hydrocephaly is is no it's no joke it's mm -hmm. it's disgustingly awful and what it does to little little kids it's and, and I'm sorry just infants not little kids mm -hmm. um, and it's a very painful way to die too most infants don't survive hydrocephaly so let's let's just hope that this GMO engineering of mosquitoes actually works I cannot stand these little buggers either I'm sure that they might be good I mean for well, they're, they're certainly uh, working on the research yeah. it just needs to get to the point where we're aware of the effects that mm -hmm. would uh, happen as a result. So, I mean, so for most people, what do you do? You live in a big city, you have to deal with buses, cars, getting hit, flying on planes, that could happen. Or if you're driving car accidents, smog, you know, uh, uh, bad food if you live somewhere else, if you're not on a farm making your own food. Oh, is this grocery store have some contaminated meat? Oh, I don't know, let's eat that and see if I die from that. Yeah. Or if you could live out in the country, I remember when I, we were in, uh, down in Louisiana, I drove from San Diego to Louisiana. As I entered the state of Louisiana, this was years ago, a huge billboard had a big mosquito on it and said, mosquitoes kill. And I was like, why are we not turning around and going back to where things make sense? Because <laughs> I was like, so everywhere you go, you could die of something. People are like, I'm moving away from all these big city folks. I'm going to get shot. Or then you get shot out there. Mm -hmm. Or you get shot in big cities. Or you die of anything. I'm not going to the ATM because, you know, people rob me in ATM. There's so many things to be afraid of. Just... I mean, just fuck it. Just go and see what happens. Well, I have to be honest with you. This is not one of the things that I'm afraid of. It, just to make it even more clear, I just booked my honeymoon in Mexico. Where? Oh. <laughs> so I'm not getting pregnant there, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to use proper protection, hopefully, and yeah, not get pregnant. <laughs> but, <laughs> <You're not shooting. laughs> yeah. but but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a high, not, I don't know how high a chance it is in Mexico, but in Brazil, it certainly seems like there's a very high chance. Let me give you some of those numbers and tell you why this is now making news. Because the Zika virus has been around for some time, but there were very few cases reported up until very recently. According to the CDC, between 2007 and 2014, a total of 14 returning U.S. travelers tested positive positive for the Zika virus. In 2015 and 2016, at least eight U.S. travelers have tested positive for Zika. Now, the numbers increased. Brazil has seen more and more newborns born uh, with 
uh, the issues associated to the virus. Uh, a congenital condition that's associated with a small head and incomplete brain development. Normally, Brazil gets several hundred cases a year, but since October of 2015, health officials have documented at least 3,500 cases. So this is why people are kind of panicking about it. Uh, the spread is rapid. You see more and more cases of it. And, you know, there needs to be some sort of solution. But as long as you're not pregnant or you're not planning to get pregnant, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. That's my theory in life. Yeah. <laughs> I think as long as 